effect, the effect of the dust of Radharani's feet on Krishna. Okay? Was that clear? Sounds a little bit mixed, mixed up. There. That was like the idea that, that Krishna is desiring to take the dust of... He wants... He's heard. So the, the point being, if you want to become a, a das, if you want to become a das, if you want to become a servant, right? You first, the first thing, the first problem is that you have to be qualified. You need to have the qualification. You can want it, but you realize that in order to do it, in order to become, in order to have the, in, in order to get the desired thing, you have to become qualified. It's just like if you want to get a job, you're going to have to get the qualifications. Now, Krishna doesn't reject. Radha and Krishna don't reject anybody. But still, uh, it's not, because, but the, there is still a qualification. It's not that there are no qualifications. There are no external or material qualifications. Your, 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 the, your birth, your intelligence, your gender, uh, none of these things are uh, qualifications or disqualifications for, for uh, service to Radha and Krishna. But, there are other qualifications that are needed. You see, you have to, you have to, uh, you know where what it is that you're, what you're getting into. You have to want what it is that you have to really want that service. And if you really want that service, then you have to be, uh, acquire the kinds of talents and the kinds of things that are needed uh, for that for that service to be carried out. So Krishna, he wants to be Radharani's das. He wants to serve Radharani's happiness. So how can he do that? He has to become qualified. He has to become worthy. He has to become worthy of her. Like I like it, uh, in the in the in the European tradition, you have the romantic uh, tradition, which is the, the tradition of the chevalier. The, in the it's about the same time. Sometimes I think you know that uh, you know they talk about in around the fifth sixth century B.C. that there was what they call an axial age. Have you ever heard this expression? This axial age. Because, you know, there were things happening all over the world, apparently, in, in terms of... There was a kind of r worldwide re religious revolution. You know, the Buddha came, and there was uh, Mahavir, and over in, the, in Israel also there were important developments, uh, and in Zoroastrianism there were important developments, and so on and so forth. That, uh, and in, in China also there were important developments in, in, in Confucius and, uh, and Lao Tzu. So they say they call that an axial age. So in another way, that around the tenth, eleventh, twelfth, around the eleventh and twelfth centuries, there was a romantic revolution, and you see that in in, in the stories, like for instance, in the, in the Muslim world, you have Tristan and his uh, not Tristan, so you have Laila Majnun, and in the, in Europe you have the you know the Lancelot and Guinevere and Tristan and his son. And at around the same time, you've got you know Radha and Krishna in in uh, in India being glorified, the, the 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 lovers being glorified. So in different kind of a different uh, approach in each in each realm, you know, because in in Vrindavan we see that as being something that there's a different kind of uh, vision of the of the romantic ideal that it's taking place. In the Supreme Lord Himself, the Supreme Lord is is, is experiencing that uh, that romance. So Krishna. So, but in the in the European tradition, what it was was that the the, the knight right, he would worship the lady fair from a from a distance, and she would be uh, you know, and he would he would never expect you know it was all it was a parakia relationship because she was usually a queen like guinevere was the wife was the queen uh, uh, king arthur's wife but uh, and she and lancelot were in love with each other but it could never be consummated because he was uh, you know he was a, 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 a dutiful and faithful knight of the round table so how could he you know his lord his king how could he uh, do anything that would uh, make the king Feel, uh, you know, how could he go against the king? So, what it was, the idea was that uh, still, because of the love that he had for the woman, for the for the for this lady fair, for this ideal woman, this most beautiful and pure and uh, uh, you know, uh, absolute uh, ideal, you know, object of love, and he would try to be. So he would spend everything. He would do everything in order to become. Worthy 
of that of that uh, of that uh, loving object. This is like I think the beginning of romanticism in the West. The same thing with Tristan and Isolde. I wrote about this on my blog. If anybody wants to go, I'm, I wrote extensively about Tristan and Isolde, and also uh, other these other kinds of uh, love stories there. So, <clears throat> but the idea was that the, the the idea was what that the that the knight would get the shakti that his ability not just to become a good knight but to become a kind of an ideal man you know to become an ideal human being that that somehow that was being transmitted to him uh, through that fealty or through that uh, sense of servitude uh, to the to this unattainable object of love that he, that he had. So in a way we have the same thing here with Krishna. That Krishna is, Krishna is seeing himself as, you know, trying to become worthy of Radha's love. That that's his, that, that, that his, that's his uh, goal in life, really. And Radharani is demanding also that he become worthy. In a sense that he, she, she loves Krishna, but she's expecting that he should be uh, you know, pure in his love, and the purity of his love, and all the energy, this Ananta Shakti of Radharani's dust of Radharani's lotus feet. In actual fact, what it's saying is, whatever Krishna does, that all the different expansions, all the different manifestations of Krishna's form, as the creator of the universe, as the savior of the devotees, as whatever whatever glories that we attribute attribute to Krishna, that those are all coming from this Ananta Shakti, from the dust of Radharani's lotus feet that Krishna is taking on his head. Because Krishna wants to be perfected in his service to Radha. And so he, this act of, you could call it, you know, if we just take it as a pure, without taking it as magical power or anything like that, we just take it as a symbolic act that he's taking the dust of the feet on her head. He's he's committing himself uh, uh, to his his fealty, his devotion, his fidelity to Radharani's lotus feet, his commitment to perfecting himself, his purifying his love, so that somehow or another he can be worthy of uh, Radharani's love. Because Radharani will hold back if she sees even the slightest, even the slightest imperfection. She expects that Krishna should be the best. So Krishna is the best. Radharani knows that. But she still wants him to always be better. This is the, the, this is the kind of the, the dynamic that, that, uh, that is going on. Ah, so Vashi Bhavanam Tadutkila ne chatada bhavo pidrishate. Asya swadasya yogyatva sadhanartha grahanena tadani pulakan. So when you see, so when Krishna does take the dust on his head, then he's he he's because he because he believes, you see, because he believes in the power, in the holy power of Rad, the dust of Radharani's lotus feet. So as soon as he takes it on his head. His entire body becomes covered with ecstatic symptoms. Radhesha. <laughs> so that's why it says sadhya vashikarana. That's why the word sadhya is there. It doesn't take any. This is, but this is the the the, the 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 sign of the immediacy. So if we're looking for a, for the proof that it's immediate, it comes from that from this ecstatic symptoms. So he says that now. What is it? Purva meva vashatve pi. Aduna kim adikyancha. So if somebody should ask, well, even before he took the dust of the feet, he, he was already under Radharani's control or he wouldn't be doing it. So what, 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 what's happened here that's extra when he takes the dust of the feet? So tatra swabuti purvaka grahane hetur evam. So now he's saying, he's saying, so now he's going to explain why uh, he takes it with, uh, knowingly, because this is, you know, if he's taking it knowingly, he wants to become Radharani's uh, uh, das, he wants to be Radharani's servant, so he's already in the awareness, or already in the consciousness that he's Radharani's das. So what extra happened here? So now he's saying, going back an extra step, just like when we're trying to understand uh, how do we come to devotion. We come to bhakti. So you, where does, first there's, say, Adol Shraddha. 
But before Adho Shraddha, there must be something else that comes there. What, 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 what precedes? Something must have preceded. Something else must have preceded the faith. And so somehow or another, the grace of the devotees and service to the devotees is uh, stipulated that it must have taken place. So here he says, Swasya uh, dhavatvena niyantri bhokti twadi bhava dukh pariharya twat na jane kadachit sevetra bhavo pi udiyat iti adi bhir yae ya eveti bhava. So as far as I can, I'm, I'm understanding here that uh, because Krishna is her lover, or here he's using the word dhava, so dhava means husband. So he says, because he's so, what we can understand, he still, he, he has that relationship, so whether it's a husband or a, an upapati, it doesn't really matter. But he says that, so therefore he has the, um, so therefore it, it's true to his characteristic uh, that he should be, he had the position of being the niyantritva and bhoktritva, because the relationship would normally be that the husband would be the, the master and the enjoyer of the wife. So here he says that, uh, or of the, of the mistress, but dukhpari harya twat na but he says because um, these can't be given up easily, but uh, he doesn't know when kadachit sevetara bhava, when he could get, because of that, so because these, because of his position, because of his position as the lover or a position as the husband, he might at any time think, I am the master and I am the enjoyer. And because there's this danger of this attitude coming in, that therefore, in order to, uh, he may lose his sense of being the servant, of being Radharani's servant. And so in order to avoid losing the sense of being of service to Radha, <laughs> he therefore, he's taking, like a, as a preventative measure, just like you sometimes you take a, a aspirins even though you don't have a headache, but you're trying to avoid, you know, you're keeping your blood, blood, blood thin or whatever, the particular extra added effects. So the, you know, the company tells you or, you know, the doctor tells you to take, continue taking an aspirin every day even if you don't have a headache. So take it as a preventative or a prophylactic <laughs> measure. So Krishna is taking Radharani, the dust of Radharani's feet, as a preventative measure so that he doesn't stop ever thinking of himself as being her servant. I'm just going to read the Hindi here so I can see if, uh, if I've made any mistakes in that translation. Yeah. Or if I've missed anything. Uh, so he says... Uh, so Sri Sham to Pele he say he Siradika Jike Vashmehe Firbi Abakya Adikata Ya Visheshta Hogai Iska Uttar Yehe ki Jan Buchkar Isa Charana Duli Rupi Churnako Leneka Ye Karanhe Sri Sam Sotstehe ki Pati Honeke Karan Niyanta Vanyamme Raknewala Bhokta upabhokarnevala hona ityadi bhavonka paritya karna katin hai. Isse na jane man me kav seva ke sivai anya koi bhav udai ho jaye. Is bhai se hi ye charna raj rupi churna swayam dharan kar liya hai. So I'm very happy to say that my translation was correct. <laughs> That he's saying, he's saying that I don't know. I can, uh, you know, uh, because my position is that of the of the male in relation to the woman. So the the, the masculine role, just like Swamiji was saying uh, yesterday, you know, that the, that the male attitude, the, the enjoying attitude, the, the the attitude of being the the doer and the owner and the, all these things. These are all, you know, ahankar is basically a masculine thing. You know, when you see all the qualities of, of a hankar, of, of the, you know, mostly those are attributable, they're more prominent in the, in the, in the male. So, um, so here it's saying that, that he, it's hard for him to give that up. How could God give up the, you know, the, you know we say that for God to become human, 
you know, that Sarvotama Naralila, that the supreme thing is to become, for, for Krishna is to, be, to, to have, play the role of a human being. Krishnera Jyoteka Kela Sarvotama Naralila Narabhapu Tahar Swaru. So he says that, he's, uh, he, he, that he, of all the different leelas, the one in the human form is the best. But he's saying that maybe it's not so easy for Krishna to, <laughs> to do that also, to really do it properly. Because hmm? really to do it properly here, he says, if I do it, if, I, if, I, if it, 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 it's the natural role to be the niyanta and the bhokta. Bhokta aram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram. Sugrilang sarva bhutanam gyatvamam shantim ritchati. This is the Gita. Sarva loka maheshwaram. This kind of thing is always going on. So he says uh, what to speak of, you know, his energy, shakti and shaktiman. So the shaktiman controls niyanta. He's the controller of his energy. And he's also the enjoyer of his energy. But the thing is, that what's the, what, is, what is being pointed out is the the upside down nature, the upside down nature that things don't happen exactly in the way that you think. The question that yes, you will enjoy, but you don't enjoy by being the enjoyer. You enjoy here, it says Krishna, but Krishna also has to become the das. He has to become Radharani's servant. So Radharani is Krishna's dasi, you know. Ami Krishna Pada Dasi. This is, you know, the, in the Ashli Shiva verse, uh, in the in the beginning of the of the translation of Krishna Das Kaviraj says, Ami Krishna Pada Dasi. Ashli Shiva Padratan Pinashtuma Madarshanan Marmahatan Karotuva Yatata Bhakti Dadhatu Lamphato Matrananatas to say Vinakara. That's Radharani's attitude. So we start from we start we start in our understanding of bhakti through by going through the gopis and going through radha. But then when but 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 the point about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is trying to understand radha because he sa he recognizes that radha has found the real technique of um, happiness. So. Uh, so then we go on. We go on. So, Vashi Karanasya Anya Dharma Twat Saki Dane Arte Arthaha Saki Dane Artha Kriyate Chait Evam Vivahotsave Vashi Krita Vashi Krita Loka Gita Siddha Twat Tad Anukaranarthan Tabi kritam rajodanam iti tattva tattu atreshtam eva jatam. Okay. Let me see that again. Oh, yeah. I was busy with, uh, with my. It went on till 3 30. So I just basically came almost straight from, the, from that uh, event. So Vashi Karana se Anya Dharma Twa. So A or Yadi Vashi Karana ka prayog to dusrehi kya kartehe ye samajkar saki jan nehi sri prayaji ki charana dhuni rupi churnaka si shampar ye prayog kya hai ye artha kya jate. Okay, I'm not gonna do this one. So it's not so Vashi Karana Sya Anya Dharma Twa. Okay, so now he would, because previously, uh, earlier in this, in the commentary, he was saying that there were two points of view. One was the point of view from Krishna taking the dust himself, and the other one is when the, the Sakis, they, they do it. So this is another way, uh, another way of the, uh, another procedure for this uh, Vashikarana to take place. So the Vashikarana is taking place when the Sakis give, give the, uh, the, uh, the dust on, on Krishna's head. So he's giving here the example that um, uh, in the Sri uh, Shampur Yepriyokya
Okay. Well, I, this is the reason I have difficulty here is because it's something I don't know. <laughs> and they, what it's saying here is saying that when, when uh, at the time of marriage, uh, in India when they have marriages, marriage, marriage in India is quite a complicated affair. Uh, you know, it's a, a, a several days uh, matter. Well, not several days, but it, at any rate, there's a, the day before the marriage, in the bride's house, there's an event where all the women come and they sing songs and, uh, you know, more or less initiate the, the, the woman or the bride into knowing what she's going to have, what she's going to be coming, getting into. Mm -hmm. So there's all, there are songs and some of the songs are body and some of the songs are, you know, different kinds. So they're kind of, you know, perhaps it's a bit late to be getting, you know, last minute instructions. But at any rate, the point of those songs, and they, so they have quite a, you know, they, ha, they, they have quite a, apparently a, men are not allowed. Except I think there's one man allowed, and that's the, the barber. There's, for some reason, the barber has a role in that. So, the, but at any rate, uh, mostly men are, men are not allowed in that scenario. And the way, you know, of course, I, I, I've never been to one, so I've never, I've never been there, so I don't know. There was a film. There was a film that was called Monsoon Wedding a few years ago. I don't know if anybody saw that. It was in there, and they showed. They did a very nice. Uh, they really did a quite a nice uh, clip, a nice scene, of fairly long, about eight ten minutes of the of the women singing, and uh, you know it was quite a, quite the quite the, the 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 fun event. But at any rate, it says here that one of the songs apparently that they sing. Is that uh, it says Loka Gita Siddha Twat, something about the that uh, about this uh, Vashi Krita that uh, that uh, about uh, the wife how the wife will bring the husband under control, so that's being sung in those in in that uh, at that event. So the Sakis, who naturally would all be present at this uh, at this kind of event, in order to make it come true. They take the dust of Radharani's feet and put it on Krishna's head uh, so that uh, that particular uh, goal will be fulfilled. So there, in later on in the Radharasa Sudha Nidhi, though we don't have, like, I'm, one of the things that we're going to be encountering as we go through Radharasa Sudha Nidhi is the interpretation of Swaki and Parakya. So it's more likely to understand that uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati was on you know, the day before yesterday in the class that I was giving where you and Isha Prakash came. Mm -hmm. So the, the, it's more likely to understand that Prabodhananda was on Harivangsha's side. So the, otherwise, why would, he, why would the book be, pre, you know, being presented in, in Harivangsha's name? Mm -hmm. You know, Prabodhananda Saraswati gave it to him. But why would he give him the book? Why would he give him the book if he didn't agree with, uh, with, with Harivangsha's attitude? And he was... Promoting, he was helping Hari Vansha by giving him the the book that he had written, uh, which which agreed. So maybe you know it's quite possible that like the, like in the in the Hari Vansha tradition, that actually the Prabodhananda Saraswati got it from Hari Vansha. You know that that, that Prabodhananda Saraswati, uh, you know, actually listened to Hari Vansha and said, "Yeah, I agree with you." But whatever you know it. it uh, you know, from a purely objective point of view, uh, you know, Prabodhananda Saraswati was the real scholar and the real thinker and the real philosopher here. He was the one who was really presenting this, the, the, the concepts. So the Radharasa Sudhanidhi, which is the basis of the, for the Radhavala Sampradaya, is coming from him. But if he gives it to Hari Vansha, it's because he's saying that let Hari Vansha take the credit, let, the, let that... Let that uh, let these ideas be, you know, present in, in his line. So, uh, in the in the Hari Vansha, in, in this book, there's a couple of verses where they talk about uh, putting on the uh, vivahotsava, putting on a, a wedding. So now, in in Radhavallava Temple, they have they do annually every year. They have a big big festival of Radharani's marriage. It's a it's a part a part of their annual tradition. Radha and Krishna get married, but the Radha and Krishna's marriage in in you know it's not such a big thing in the Gaudiya tradition, but even if 
even in the Radha Rasa Sudhaniti, when it talks about that marriage, it says they're doing it like, a, like they're playing at it. It's a, it's a childhood game, he says. It's a childhood game. So they're just like, like children, you know, like when children are playing house, when little girls and little boys may be playing house, they may have a, they may put, you know, have a play marriage, and you know, the, the boy is going to play the husband, although he probably won't play for very long. You know, you know, from my from my memory and from my my experience, the boy doesn't like to play the husband very long in the girls' game. <laughs> but uh, in in Krishna Lila, that Krishna is playing the role. They're uh, they're playing. They, they they play at getting married. So as a part of that game, as a part of that little play play that they're putting on, uh, the gopis, the sakis, they come and they put put the, the dust on, on Krishna's head, and that way uh, he gets what he wants. So he still wants to have the, he still wants, he's, he's still complicit. Krishna's not uh, fighting. He doesn't want, it's not that, the, it's not, because usually when they give a, you know, what is the point? The point is that when you make, in, in the whole system of magic, right? So you have magic potions. Like in the story of Tristan and Isolde, the whole story about Tristan and Isolde is that uh, Tristan, uh, he, he goes in order to, because the two kingdoms, Ireland and Cornwall, they are, they are not at peace with one another. So Tristan, he goes and he... Uh, the story is that the king, that a, a golden hair, is, it comes, a bird brings a golden hair into the palace of King Mark. And when he sees it, he falls in love with the... With the possessor of that hair. And he says, if you can find me the one who has, who, from whom this hair has come, you know, then uh, I, will, I, I would like to marry her. So Tristan recognizes, he knows whose hair that is. He knows it's Isolde's hair. So he goes, to, um, he goes to, to, the, to Ireland, and after some adventure, you know, he kills a dragon or something, and then he, you know, he, he uh, wins, wins the hand. So Isolde, um, for, the, for King Mark. So the mother of Isolt gives a magic potion. And she says, because the, you know, they won't know each other. Mark and Isolt will not know each other. So in order that they, that they fall in love and have a happy marriage, you know, she gives, the, gives a love potion. But by accident, uh, uh, Tristan drinks the love potion. And uh, the two of them drink the love potion. So the, the, the wrong person falls in love with, with Isolt. And that from then, you know, all the trouble begins. So the trouble all starts there. So, so the idea is that the magic, the, the magic potion, the love magic potion, is supposed to make someone who doesn't love you fall in love with you. That's why this, this Vashikarana mantra, you can go, if you want, you know, I'm sure that here in Vrindavan you can do it. You can find a, a pundit who will make you a tabij, who will make you a, a you know, or he will tell, give you some instruction. You can say, "I want this particular girl to fall in love with me," and he'll, you know, do the. He'll make a little. He'll make a diagram, make a, a, a yantra, and put the mantras in it, and he'll uh, do the puracharan or whatever the mantra, and he'll do the puja of the mantra and do the puja of the tabij, and then uh, that's supposed to make the girl fall in love with you or the boy fall in love with you. So that's the so without knowing it, right? Because they don't, you know, if, you, if, if, the, if you're not in love with me, you don't want to be in love with me, I want you to be in love with me. It's the, that's, that's the idea behind Vashikarana. The Vashikarana is, that, that's, the, that's the principle. But Krishna here, he's complicit. He wants to become, he wants to be, he wants the magic potion to work <laughs> like that. Yeah. He just wants it to be. It's just like a person when they're, if a person is a real alcoholic or a drunk, you know, he's already drunk, but he wants to drink more still. It's like that. Krishna is already in love with Radha. He's